Have you ever wanted to have a rock star attitude? Today you're in for an amazing treat. I have a guest today that is going to show you not only to have a rock star attitude, but from a real rock star himself. Today I'm bringing on a guest, Mark Schulman, drummer for Pink, drummer for Cher, Billy Idol, Simple Minds, all these amazing people. But most importantly, what Mark's going to show you today and what we're going to talk about is how to really bring the lessons that musicians go through into your life and how to have that rock star attitude. We talk about attitude. We talk about gratitude. We talk about really empowering yourself through your thoughts, through your intention to have the life that you desire and dream of. So stay tuned. Hi there. My name is Heather J. Kreider, and I welcome you to the Go Reflect Yourself podcast. I'm here to bring you real practical brain-based strategies helping you transform your life one thought at a time. Working hard and staying busy will only get you so far to truly become happy, content, and who you're meant to be. You have to move beyond physical capacities and look from within, allowing you to overcome those obstacles and barriers. My mission is to help inspire you to take massive action, to transform your life, all starting from the inside out. I invite you to watch or listen to this podcast and share it with others who you feel can also benefit from it. I invite you to join my free Facebook group, Beat Burnout. That's where we provide more practical neuroscience and mindset strategies, helping you reduce stress, anxiety, and overcome overwhelm. Thank you so much for being here. I'm honored and grateful for you. You are stronger than you believe. You have greater powers than you know. Mark Schumann on the drum! Mark Schulman has had a front row seat performing with legendary acts including Billy Idol, Foreigner, Velvet Revolver, Stevie Nicks, Cher, and Pink. And he is here to be your personal rock star. Get ready to rock! Please welcome Mark Schulman. All right, here he is, the one, the only, Mark Schumann! Yeah, and the crowd goes wild! Oh, wait a minute. No, there's no crowd here. Sorry, I'm lying. <laughs> We're the crowd. There's there's listeners. That's the crowd. Yeah. They can hear you. Come on, listeners. Go wild. Let That's me right. hear you say yeah! Go crazy! Let me hear you say yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> But if you're driving, just stay on the road right now. <laughs> yeah, well, you can still say, yeah, just don't lift your hands. You know? Exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm not going to go put your hands in the air like you don't care. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm driving so bad. You know? Exactly. Mark, this is going to be an amazing conversation. I know it. Heather, <laughs> it already is an amazing you. conversation. We're starting off on a, on a fun and funny <laughs> journey. <laughs> It's a journey. Well, and that's, I just, let's get the platitudes, whatever. Let's get that out of the way first. You're incredible. Yeah. Thank you for your time and being here and contributing and being of service to our listeners today. I know it's going to be amazing. So let's get that out of the way. Thank you so much for your time. It is my pleasure. And I think that you are incredible. And we shared the stage together and that's how we met. And then we became friends and we've developed quite a relationship based on a lot of uh, similar philosophies and even similar approaches to how we deal with our speaking businesses. So I, I feel a great resonance with you. And from the start, we just got on and I just thought she, this woman has some really succinct and incredible knowledge and that's why i'm here because i respect what you do and i respect your intelligence and your speaking ability and your kicking butt so <laughs> here i am to support you well thank you and did i'll write back to you and i want to circle you. back to that just a little bit so i heard you speak at like you said we we shared the stage recently together and you were the kickoff speaker and when i was listening to you speak 
I would, I, my friends were watching me because I had a, or people I had already met were watching me because they knew I was speaking later. And I had the biggest grin on my face because <laughs> everything you were saying, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we have so much similarity, just a little yeah. bit different perspective. But it was very, and that's what I told you. And that's how we really clicked. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, this gives me so much hope isn't the right word. And I'm not for sure even what word I used, but just because of the way that you approached, it really humanized people. And that's what mm -hmm. I loved because let's be honest, Mark, you're this crazy, awesome, successful rock star. You've got a career that most people would love to really dissect and be a part of even just a small smidgen of your career. Let's just be very honest about that. But I think what people resonated and myself included is you're a real dude and not only a real dude, but you care about really investing in people and helping people be what I call better people. So, that's where I want to head well, with this conversation. <laughs> you know, I, as as I when we had our first conversation, I said the way that I view my life is I am here to be of service with everything I do with everybody I meet, and I think you found that through our friendship that that is I, I, I uphold that standard, and so for me, I just. You know, I come from a background of uh, professorial parents. You know, my parents were both college professors. I got sort of that teaching gene. And I discovered early on after doing a lot of music clinics that um, I had, a, I had a, a bit of a talent and a propensity to be able to really communicate and have people get it. And I found that when I was teaching a lot of like drummers, like called drum clinics, and I did probably a thousand of those, people were resonating more with the content with the success coaching aspect than the drumming aspect. And I realized, well, why should I limit what I'm doing to this small microcosm of musicians when I could take this life experience and I'm very philosophical and I've just finished my second book and I can transform this into the collegiate and corporate worlds and really be of service to people and use music as a metaphor and use my experience of working with these incredible artists like the gal that you see right behind me. And um, because I've pink. studied these people, I, I yeah, it's just pink. I mean, I work with pink, <laughs> Billy Idol, Simple Minds, all these people, uh, you know, you saw that in the intro. Um, so yes. um, I realized I, I, over the years, I really have actually studied these people and because there's no accident to success. So I figured how can I bottle up all of this information, including my own experiences, and then apply it back to the corporate world and be able to really be of service and make a difference in these people's lives. And so ironically, you know, people think of me as a rock star, you know, whatever. I, I work for rock stars and, and I appreciate that. And they hire me because I'm a quote unquote rock star drummer. But the reality is, is I want people to walk off stage with them feeling like rock stars rather than isn't Mark so cool. I want them to walk off stage feeling well. Mark gave me insights and now I feel more like a rock star and I have more swagger and I have content that I can immediately use and apply based on his experiences. So that's my true goal. That's my absolute goal is to be of service. And I even tell my clients, it's just from the moment I land till the moment I get back on that plane, I am yours. Whatever you need, I'm here to support you. If you want me to come and come to a dinner, you know, have drinks with everybody. And then I get a chance to actually even meet people and bond even more. And that creates a, a stronger connection because, you know, we're trying to connect. That's what you and I do. We want to be able to connect with people. Like, even though I have an interesting approach because um, my first book was called Conquering Life Stage Fright. And one of the ways that I overcame a lot of the stage fright was realizing someone had told me, you know, you're talking to one person at a time. A lot of people look at it and go, oh, it's this huge crowd of people. And that, you know, goes back to like, you know, when I interviewed Tony Shea, the, you know, the rest in peace, the, the great CEO of um, Zappos. Zappos, you know, he said, 
that goes back to, you know, the saber tooth tiger, tiger days when you had like 50 eyes on you, that was dangerous, but it's not dangerous anymore. And it made me start to think, well, how can I um, sort of quantify that and make that into information that I can use to make, to ease my own stage fright and my own uh, challenges that I may have. And I realized I'm talking to one person at a time. So when I'm crossing that stage, I'm making eye talk, contact with you, eye contact with you, eye contact with you. And I, you'll never hear me say you guys or you all. I always say you because I am creating a personal relationship with everybody else. Now, you're a coach, so you understand what it's like having these personal relationships. So that's what makes you such a great speaker because you understand having been a coach that it really is about connecting with a bunch of one-on-one -on -one people. I, you know, tell me if I, if, if you disagree with what I'm saying, I'm just making this assumption yeah. based on who you are and based on your background. Um, but I think that that makes it so much more effective for the audience because then, it, you know, at times, yes, we, we become a team. Like if I'm doing a team building exercise, that's dedicated to the team consciousness. But other than that, it's like when you're watching a movie, you're watching a movie and you get engaged when you're reading a book, it's a one-on-one -on -one experience. So I want the one-on-one -on -one experience with the audience because I feel like I can be more of service that way. And they feel like they're getting the one-on-one -on -one connection. And I think that's really critical. Tell it's, me if you agree and tell me if that's your approach when you are translating your, all your coaching experience into speaking live. Yeah, no, you, you've hit the nail on the head and the message that I always try to translate is it, it is about connection. And so, and I think your message ends up being very, very similar. Be of service, really showing people how to be of service. But I start with the self first. I have to really understand how to connect with the self. And that starts with me connecting with me, knowing my awareness so I can connect with you and then be of service so yeah. it's connection is that thread and yes. it's i think so i want to go back to that service word and in connection when you're speaking or when you're consulting or having these conversations let's just put it out there it's a very stressful world and yes. that's that stage fright, that anxiety, that pressure, we all feel it from different perspectives, right? Yeah. But when you're in the corporate world, especially, it's so challenging to stop and connect with yourself and be of service to others because you've got all this anxiety and things that you need to do and lists how can you draw this so here's my question in that to you how can you draw that parallel so you talked about music as a metaphor how can you draw the parallel to really have people understand truly that one-on-one -on -one connection to reduce that fear anxiety so that way people can be more present in the moment and not see it as stage fright does that make sense where i'm headed with that question yes well what I speak about now is the power of attitude, as you know, and it's based on a formula because as you said, it all begins with yourself, right? It begins with you. Um, I'm going to preface what I say because I wanted to address one thing that you had talked about. Before I go on, call it a prayer, call it a mantra, but when, when I'm collecting my energy to be of service, what I tell myself is I say, I want to, this audience to be just overwhelmed with amazing information that they can take away. And I want to really connect with everybody. And I want to be very, very present and very aware of them and reading the audience very carefully so I can be even more effective and shift a little bit if I need to shift, if I find the energy is going one way. So, Everything that I think about before I go out is all about them. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. Because if I find myself um, thinking about myself too much, and I even laugh, one of the causes of stage fright, so to speak, is because you become so self-absorbed. 
you know, when you're going to talk to somebody, when you're going to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation when, whether, or a pitch meeting or whether you're going to speak in front of a thousand people and you start to have like this sort of deleterious stage fright, it usually, it's one of two reasons. Either you're not prepared and if you're not prepared, you should be afraid. You know, in any conversation you're going to have, whether it's with one person or a thousand. So preparation is critical, having clarity about exactly what you want to communicate and then being very prepared, very prepared. Like I still rehearse my speech four or five times a week. And that's what creates absolute confidence. And that was what my first bit book was based on the three C's, clarity, capability and confidence. So very simply, that's that's that formula then the formula for my new book is based on the power of attitude because attitude is so critical because attitude is at the foundation of everything so what i tell my audiences and what the book talks about is we can't always control what happens to us but we always have the power to change control or shift our attitudes and all that takes is making a decision to choose an attitude at that moment that serves you and i know that sounds very simple but whenever you take an action your action is based on a decision so tell me if you if you think anything I'm saying is incorrect. No. When you make a decision, you are cutting off all other possibilities. So if you make that commitment to yourself that you are going to shift your attitude on the spot to serve you, it gives you enormous power. And why it gives you enormous power is because your attitude is what drives your behavior. And one attitude can drive many behaviors. Think about the power and the implications in that. And your behavior is what determines the consequences or outcomes of your life. So it's based on what we call the attitude formula. A times B equals C. Attitude times behavior equals consequence. And that is now what I speak about. So understanding that you actually have that power to shift your attitude on the spot is extraordinary. And knowing that that is what determines the outcomes, it begins with attitude. And that is within your control. That is within your consciousness. And that is what you need to manifest to drive the behavior and to achieve the outcomes that you want to achieve. And if you want, I could take you through that attitude shifting exercise that you saw me do live. I'm happy to share that as well. Well, I, I actually, yes. And that's so perfect segue. It's like you're reading my mind because that's right. I am, where, I am reading your mind. Heather. I know you are. I know. <laughs> your background kind of looks like a, um, a magician in some way, like I'm being tranced <laughs> and I'm being pulled in. <laughs> no, in actuality, no, it's just some video footage i'm really not reading your mind but i am paying a lot of attention to you and to be of service to you and to be of service to the listeners so it really is just about paying attention there's nothing supernatural about it but it's I, very simple so, but i that so this is it i've got goosebumps and my mind's going in a million different places because there's a thousand different ways we can have this conversation and i get so <laughs> excited about this i'm like oh, we got to talk about this and this and this but it really comes down to what you just said, it, it really is that simple, but, and here's the big but in that, when people are in, and you talked about this a little bit earlier from that reptilian brain, from the perspective of we get in this survival mode, we actually turn off the ability to process logically in those moments that we're in survival mode. That's a biological factor of the way our brain works. So the habit then is the reaction. The habit is that reactive way that that behavior then comes up without even knowing it. So the mm -hmm. attitude then is maybe not of best service to the self or to the other. So that's really where I was headed for you is one, what are one of the suggestions you have for people to be able to slow everything down to be able to get that brain back online to really then see because the attitude we can feel it but a lot of people don't know we feel it 
it's it's kind of like this is the way I explain it to my clients. You know when you feel icky, but it may not be until that consequence of your behavior you realize that you felt icky the whole time. And icky, I realize, is not a super technical term, but it works. It's perfect, though. It's exactly how you feel. Yes. Icky describes it. It's, it's a very sim, sim, it's a so simple. Let's you know, make it as simple as possible. Absolutely. And so my, my point of where, where I'm headed with that is when we're in that reactive state, even though we might know in our gut that we feel icky or we feel that we're not in alignment with really where we want to head, to be able to make that logical decision is quite challenging, especially if you're in a high stress, a high performer, if you're in a situation. And I would imagine as a a musician, that performance pressure is equally as real, if not more real in the world that you've come from. I would like to interrupt this podcast and invite you to a money mastery workshop I have coming up very soon. If you're honest and we're all honest about money, money affects us every single day. Most of us have a lot of stress because of money. We cannot leave our houses or even be in our houses without doing or thinking something connected to money. However, have you ever thought about your relationship with money? Is your current financial life where you want it to be? Does your financial life affect other areas of your life and causing more stress? Likely the answer is yes. And regardless of your income or your financial situation, you likely might also be shackled by money and even have avoiding the money conversations. The Money Mastery Workshop will teach you how to approach the mindset of money, how to reprogram your thoughts and your feelings and your beliefs around money and where they actually come from so you can eliminate fear, doubt, and worry once and for all. The idea is to understand that making money is actually very easy once you know a few of these very simple strategies and how to clear these blocks that stand in your way. And having an abundant life is easy also when you know the thinking and the mindset behind money. So head on over to heatherjkreider.com slash money workshop. The next workshop is August 30th. Permanently free yourself from financial insecurity and start attracting the money, abundance, freedom, and lifestyle you desire and deserve. Sign up now for the August 30th workshop. Head on over to heatherjkreider.com slash money workshop heatherjkreider.com slash money workshop okay let's get back to this amazing episode so my question out of that is what are one of the ways that you help people have more awareness to maybe once you start going down this icky path to be able to stop it from having this reaction that doesn't serve you. So then you can choose a response more appropriate with really the direction you desire to had. Well, as I demonstrated when you saw me speak, um, there are a variety of attitude shifts that I utilize that have been incredibly beneficial for me. But then I actually created a process so based on the psychology and the physiology that I was studying to create an immediate attitude shift when you really get in that funk and you need to snap out of it very quickly. So I'll take everybody through it because I do this sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes multiple times during the day. Um, and we went through this when you saw me speak. So very simply, I create an I choose an attitude or think about an attitude that serves me. And you could change the word attitude to mindset, viewpoint, whatever is most comfortable for you. Um, and we are also attaching a physical response. So you're actually creating kind of a state change. Tony Robbins calls it a state change when you do something physical to just sort of jolt yourself. So I'm combining physiology with um, a real intention of actually choosing an attitude that you want to create. And it can be something like joy, happiness, confidence, courage. There are 
it, whatever attitude that you want to want to manifest in that moment. Let's pick joy. Joy is a great example. So what I do is I recall a time when I was joyful. And I want to attach as many senses from that experience as I can, because it makes the experience even more potent, even more real. But before, and I'm going to attach physiology, and you'll see how I do that. But before I even do that, I want to set up my mind like something cool is about to happen. So your mind knows we're about to go through a process. So very simply, um, I I think I heard this from Mel Robbins when she talked about the five second rule. And I, this is the only thing I, I, I took away because, you know, I don't steal other people's stuff. But I thought, well, this could work to set up the attitude shift. It's counting backwards by five, like it's a rocket launch. So here's what I do. I'll do it right now. Five, four, three, two, one. I close my eyes tightly. I clench my fist tightly. I tighten my core tightly. And I recall a time when I was joyful. And I'm involving as many senses as I can from that event. And I just sit with it for a moment. Ah, and you can see the smile is a natural part of it. When you smile, you're activating hundreds of muscles in your face that send a signal to your body to relax that send endorphins to your brain. So you've not only just recalled a truly joyful time, you're also getting the added endorphins just from the smile. So that particular uh, event I was thinking of was when we went to Puerto Vallarta uh, in Mexico over New Year's Eve. And one night my daughter and I snuck into the pool and after hours, you know, so, and I'm just attaching the senses. So I'm feeling the chilly water and I'm recalling, you know, hearing the echoes of our laughter and all the splashing kind of bouncing off of the water and the sides. And of course, my daughter was carrying me underneath the water as you do when you're 11. But I am feeling the joy from that experience. Because as you know, your mind does not time bind these emotions. So when you recreate joy, when you recreate gratitude, when you recreate courage, when you recreate confidence, these specific events, you are reliving those events right then and there. And it's the quickest way I've found to snap myself out of a funk. And that, so what I do is then I would take the audience, I would have the audience do the same exact thing, just recall a time when you're joyful. But what I do is I do it four or five times in a row. And it, t it totals like 45 seconds or a minute at the most until I have what I call my shift eaten grin on my face. And I have shifted my attitude and it works. And that can last for hours. It can last for the entire day. If I'm having a challenging day, I might do it multiple times. I might do it 10 or 20 times during the day because I know that I have the power. When I shift my attitude, it will shift my, my the outcomes, shift the way that I am feeling the way that I am thinking to be more desirable and it affects everybody else around me. And it's very powerful and it's very potent and it's very immediate. So if I, I could even do that if I'm having like deleterious stage fright or if I'm nervous about going to talk to somebody, or if I'm feeling anxious about something, I think, what do I want to create? If you're about to go into a pitch meeting, what do you want to create? Confidence is an example. So you recall a time when you were confident and really recall that time with every bit of detail that you can recall and just re-experience it, bring it back and relive it. So you're feeling that confidence and then do it again. Recall another time if you want. You know, some of my attitude shifts I also talk about are shifting your have to's to get to's. Because so many of us feel like so much of what we do is a chore. A have to feels like a chore, whereas a get to feels like a choice. If you reframe in your mind going from a chore to a choice, then even the most mundane aspects of your life, you're just having more fun. Rock stars love to have fun, let's face it. Examples are, I don't have to pick up my kid. I go. I don't have to take my kid to school. I get to take my kid to school. I don't have to go to work. I get to go to work. Or one of my favorites I use all the time, I don't have to go to the gym. I get to go to the gym. Because by creating that reframe, my mind then 
listens and my mind views that experience differently. And these are just very quick cognitive tricks. I don't go as deep as you, but I'm looking for some very quick, effective results for people because that's what I'm there to create so people can walk away with that. And the power of gratitude, one thing I found that is incredibly valuable, if you are in, if you are feeling funky, and I don't mean funky like you want to get up and dance, funky like you're in a compromised emotional state. And this works for me all the time. I just stop right then and there. Give yourself the luxury. Give yourself the reprieve of stopping right then and just think of somebody or something that brings you gratitude and really own it. Really sit with it. You deserve it. And really allow that gratitude to overtake you and just put your focus on that instead of whatever you're feeling funky about. And allow yourself to smile, allow that attitude shift to happen. And the moment you're done, do it again. Think of somebody else or something else. Then do it again and do it again. You're building up a fortress of gratitude that can literally shift you out of that funk. And it's very, very effective. Again, you know, this doesn't take the place of therapy. It doesn't take the place of, you know, long-term work on issues that may be reoccurring, but it can help you at these moments when you're particularly anxious or particularly stressed and you need to come to the table right then and there, right? Mm -hmm. So you're a neuro coach and you don't even realize it. I'm sitting here thinking <laughs> from the neuroscience perspective. So can I, can I get just a little neuroscience on you? Because yeah, I'm like busting... I'm busting at the same go, go, go neuro nerd on me, baby. You do it. <laughs> so what you're actually doing, you're retraining the brain. And every yeah. time that you actually stop and do that reframe and that visualization. So when you're closing your eyes tightly and you're visualizing this experience that you're trying to recreate this state of being or state of mind or feeling or this visceral emotion what you're doing is you're strengthening the pathway of that emotion versus allowing this other pathway. Our brains tend to hold negativity way more, and that's a survival mechanism. There's nothing wrong right. with your brain. The negative Nancys, they just have a stronger survival mechanism. There's nothing wrong with that, but your brain cannot feel pleasure and pain at the same time. Right. So that's what you're doing is you're slowing everything down and the release. So this is what's so fascinating about the nervous system there. When you're holding tightly your eyes, your like you said, your core, your 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 fist, if you release super, 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 super slowly, the slower the better in releasing. Mm -hmm. You're slowing all those processes down. And I always have with me a little picture of a brain and it's an adorable, a colleague of mine drew it. And for those who are listening, I always show this, but this is a really cool picture of the brain and it's the major networks that we have in our brain. And when we're in that survival mode, it basically freaks out and everything goes offline. Well, that slow release in our nervous system actually is able for all the networks to kind of come together in this beautiful harmony and right. say, how can we work together here to achieve what we really are trying to achieve, which is that state of emotion or being, which is what you're talking about. I want to feel right. joy. I want to be in a joyous state. That's who I'm desiring right now not this other being that does not serve me that is funky and not in the groovy funky way in the bad funky yeah. way so yeah. i love i love 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 that you did that you're a neuro coach and you don't even realize it <laughs> well you know i i have studied a lot of psychology i mean and, I, and that's where i i bring in these processes based on what i've studied and uh try to make it my own 
and use this hybrid of different philosophies that I've gotten from other people and create like that process. You know, the attitude shifting process is something that I created, but I found, wow, this really works for me. So if it works for me, it can work for other people. And you know what I'm going to do if it's okay with you? I'm going to add the release slowly part. I'm going to try that myself and experiment with that if that's okay with you, because that makes, again, you're teaching me and I don't want to take your stuff away from you, but that would be very useful because I've never thought of releasing slowly. I never thought of allowing it to like integrate a little bit more. I see that that, that is being integration. So uh, if it's okay with you, Heather, I um, yeah, I can credit you on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're on stage and you say release slowly, say, I got this from the super crazy, awesome neuro coach, Heather J. Kreider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it does, it increases, it increases that extra dopamine and it allows the nervous system to catch up. And that's yeah. one of the, and most of my clients and listeners know that there are these super ninja tricks because it's all about slowing the processing down so you can allow yourself then to be able to choose that attitude to give right. yourself the behavior yeah. that you're desiring so you can have the consequence, which is right. a beautiful one versus one that's not going to serve you. So yeah. yes, use it, please, please, Love it. because it will help it. people. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> See, we are so synergistic in how we think and what we do. And you're, you're, you're approaching it obviously from, from more of a studied and uh, erudite point of view than I am. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm so physical and I'm a drummer. So I, I really like to incorporate, you know, the physicality with the emotion. And, and uh, again, give people something they can walk away with very quickly, like you're doing. Um, it's just wonderful. I, I, I could listen to you for hours. <laughs> uh, well, ditto there. And that's, I'm so glad you brought up the, the drumming piece, because that was one of the questions I was going to ask you you're when and again i'm not a drummer so you're gonna have to stop me if this doesn't make sense but you're releasing so much emotion through your body and i would think that drumming is probably one of the best instruments to be able to do that on to really convey this emotion through your body as this vehicle to make this beautiful music how first of all is that is that true Absolutely. But okay. I think that applies. I think it really applies to all musicians. I mean, drummers are more physical. It is a very physical, like I, uh, the drummer for Blondie, Clem Burke, actually wired up a drummer playing like a one and a half to two hour set of rock music. And the first thing they determined it is that the drummer was burning as many calories as a football, like a soccer player does in a game. I mean, I, when I'm playing, really playing full out, which I play full out, as you saw, um, I mean, like on the pink tour, there were a good amount of breaks, but like when I was playing as an example with foreigner or more of a rock band or with Billy Idol and Billy's like, <laughs> so real fast and I'm playing like solid for an hour and a half, man, when I'm done, I am spent. If I'm not spent, I don't feel like I've actually done my job. That's the way I feel because I'm expending a lot of physical energy. Um, the emotional attachment, I think that all musicians get, it's an emotional expression. So mine is a very physical combined with emotional expression, but you watch a lot of these like heavy bands and these younger bands and these kids, even the guitar players and bass players and singers, they're running around the stage and they are just giving every ounce of their energy. I mean, if you're committed, you know, like when I talk about in my speech, it's like every single note matters for me. It's, you know, every single note. And I, and I attach a sense of purpose to every note because I talk about the fact that we get passionate about stuff, but passion is fleeting. Eventually the passion goes away. So the passion is the how, but the purpose is the why. Like, why am I doing this? What's my, you know, super innate desire and reason for doing what I do? And when you attach a sense of purpose to every note, word, thought, action, you could use the metaphor to extend anything, then you're actually attaching a sense of purpose to everything you do. And the moment you attach a sense, that sense of purpose, it brings the passion back. And the passion feeds the purpose and the purpose feeds the passion. A friend of mine calls it the cycle of empowerment. So it's really, really um, 
it's a wonderful way to approach everything you do because you have the ability to attach purpose to everything you do. And that's another way to remind yourself of who you are. Why? Like, it's about the why. Why am I doing it? Why am I having this conversation? Why am I going to pitch this? Why am I going to speak to these people? Why am I going to talk to my team? If you really define that why and you define that purpose, that will empower you because then you will, every single thing you do, you realize every detail, every nuance. I talk about rock star performers. Every detail is critical. Every emotion, when you look at the greatest athletes, the greatest performers of any type, nothing slips by. Everything is intentional and every detail matters. And so that's how I approach my speech. You know, even when I get up, like when I give a speech, I say, I'm not giving a speech. I am the speech. You know, every word I say matters. Every inflection matters. Every bit of body language matters. Every pause matters. And so if you approach that's one of, one of the metaphors for music is I say, look at yourself as a performer with everything you do. Because for a performer, every detail absolutely matters. And every performance is not only a reflection of what we do, but it's a reflection of who we are. Because if you are really present, it is who you are when you are communicating anything to anybody whether it's one person, whether it's a group, whether you're leading, whether you're following. You know, I talk about the Pink Tour. There are 225 people on that tour. And, you know, so many people think I'm a rock star. I'm on the stage. Imagine 50,000 people looking at that stage and not one set of eyes is on you. That's my life because I'm in the back line. They're all watching Pink. I'm supportive. I'm literally called the back line, the, the drummer, the guitar player, the bass player. We are the back line. We're supporting that front line, that shiny brand in the front. But every single person on that tour is imminently important. You know, when Pink has just done this, um, you know, harrowing aerial stunt and she's parched and she's running back to the stage at that moment the girl whose job it is to put the water and the voice spray and the right tea on the stage right at that moment she's the most important person on the tour and when pink is about to do an aerial stunt and the second rigger is monitoring all of the motors that are running all of the rigging equipment that dude is the most important person because he's watching for any anomalies or any variations in those motors. And he's critical. So everybody is critical. Everybody's part is equally as important. And we forget that. A lot of times people feel insignificant or unacknowledged. But the truth is, if you weren't there, it would not run the way that it runs. And it's, a, it, it's empowering to, to think of yourself that way. And so I always think whenever I'm part of anything that I am crucial and I am critical, especially if I know why I'm doing it, especially if I am being it, it is who I am, not just what I do. And that is the rock star attitude. That's the title of my speech, Hacking the Rock Star Attitude. That's what the rock star performance is, is everybody uses that word rock star ad nauseum. But the, but the reality is that's what being a rock star performer is, is like every single moment, every nuance matters. It all matters. It's so... You can tell with the way that I communicate. It's like every single thing I say, I'm very careful and articulate because I'm paying attention to all the nuances because this is who I am when I'm expressing this. Yeah. No, it's, it's so beautiful and powerful. And again, I'm just, I'm grinning for so many reasons. Number one, for you to be able to explain that to somebody to help them understand how valuable and important they are. We live in such a society where everybody wants to be on the, the, have the eyeballs on them you know it's that right. self-serve 
and we won't go in that tangent or I won't go in that tangent. But, <laughs> but I get it. Yeah. Well, you know, we're growing up in this influencer YouTube generation and, you know, a lot of, a lot of, especially like kids and, and, and um, you know, like my daughter's 12 and people of that age are just so influenced by the me, 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 me. And they forget that it, the reality is that most people are going to be a part of a team, but that's still, that doesn't lessen your importance. Yeah. If in, in a way, it makes you more important because you're part of something that's bigger than you. Yes. And it isn't just about you. And so that's such an important lesson and to just to remind people of. And it's hilarious. Again, I'm thinking of all these things in my mind. But a few years ago, I wrote an article and it was titled that intention is your superpower. And that's really the, the premise behind that. If to be, because really what we're talking about, or one of the many, many things we're talking about, is to really feel, and you can correct me if you think this isn't accurate, but to really feel like we're a rock star, to feel like we have that vibe. It's, just, it's this desired euphoria, really, that we're going after. And what it really is, is it's being in the flow. It's being right. in that state where you lose track of time and space and who you are doesn't matter because everything is in this perfect harmony because you, you are in the flow. That's yeah. starting with the intention of what you said, not just being yeah. interested in showing up, but being committed to show up and having the intention of committing. And it's this trickle effect to create this beautiful harmony so you can be in the flow and then you become your absolute best beyond self. That's yeah. when music really happens. That's, I love just, it's all, I agree entirely. <laughs> It's, you know, I just call it the flow state. I mean, that's yeah. what happens certainly with musicians, but we all have it like when you're at work and you're just like, you're in it. Yeah. You know, you're in it. Yeah. And that means you're really present. And that means it, you are it. It yeah. is you. You are so engaged and you're so committed to that moment that, wow, where did time go? I forgot to have lunch or I forgot to go to the bathroom or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a wonderful feeling, and I think we all know that. Yeah. And you could you could create that. It's there should be no judgment about what you do or what your position is. You can create that feeling with whatever your position is, if you have that intention. As you talk about intention, is so critical. And you are a rock star. You can be a rock star. I've seen rock stars in every field you know i've gone to like a fast food restaurant and had someone that just had like swagger waiting on me they just were in it and they were happy and they were just passionate about what they were doing and you felt you know that they had a sense of purpose in it and they really were in it they were in, they were just fully engaged and you and feel engaged. that yeah and you feel that and, yeah. and and you're laughing together and i just love that you know yeah. like even when I get it, like I just got on the, I was on a plane today, flying home from Austin, and like one of the flight attendants, we just connected. Like she was just in it. She was loving what she did. She was loving people. She was making a choice that she was going to have a great time. Because you all know when you get on a flight, like you got that grumpy flight attendant that doesn't want to be there, and then you have this amazing flight attendant that's just loving what they do. Yeah. It's a decision that you can make. Yeah. It's an attitude you can choose, going back to what I was originally talking about. Yeah. And it's, it's a matter of how you position yourself. And, of course, intention. What is your intention? What's the state? What's the attitude you want to create, no matter what you do, no matter where you are? Because you could be miserable doing the coolest thing, and you could be ecstatic doing the most mundane activity, depending upon how you choose to do it and who you choose to be while you're doing it. Yeah. And it can be very contagious. My daughter years oh, ago. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, my daughter read the book, the butterfly effect. And she wrote, I had my mm. kids read books and write little summaries of what they got from the book. 
And that's one that really stick, stuck out for her. And she brings it up today even. She's writing essays for, for college now. And she brought up how one little thing of service and putting a smile on someone's face can be a butterfly effect. Absolutely. It's and contagious. It, it and is. it ripples and it ripples and it ripples. And yeah. You know, to ex maybe the, to explain what the butterfly effect. I mean, they, they, the I guess the, the textbook definition is like a butterfly's wings generate a certain amount of velocity, and over a million years of evolution, that is that little influence has changed evolution and changed the planet forever, and it's the smallest effect, but over time it has enormous power. So you do have enormous power and I get affected by people all the time. We all get affected by people's energy. So, you know, I might be feeling, I might have some funk. Look, I get funky too. I'm not all like, you know, butterflies and, and rainbows all the time. I have my, my plenty of funky moods. And then someone will just like, I'll just get someone's energy. It'll be like, wow, you just completely shifted my attitude just by who you are being. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it's, I just it really love is. That it can be that simple too. And it goes back to yeah. that decision. So we're really, really yeah. quick. I know we're, I want to be very, very aware and honor your time, but I really want to ask you about freeing yourself by focusing on failing. Can you talk about that concept? Well, I, was taught a concept by one of the mentors of my life, the gentleman that's co-wrote co my last book with me, Dr. Jim Samuels. He's taught me a lot of amazing concepts. As a matter of fact, added two times behavior equals consequences, his concept. And then I, I adapted the uh, uh, clarity capability from his clear, capable, confident. Um, so, so, you know, we, we work together on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the processes that we've gone through over the years is what we call freedom flows. So it's an interesting process because when you first hear about it, um, it, it might seem a little strange, but you want to be free for something to happen and free for something not to happen. And so you, there are, you always ask the polar opposite, like I'm free to have an amazing podcast with Heather. I'm free not to have an amazing podcast with Heather. I'm free to have a horrible podcast with Heather. I'm free not to have an amazing or a horrible podcast with Heather. So what I'm doing is I'm getting, I'm free to fail. That doesn't mean you want to fail. That means you're opening up the channels of freedom associated with failing. I'm free not to fail. And then I immediately go to, I'm free to succeed. I'm free not to succeed because these freedom flows are literally just open up the channels of your brain to possibility because whatever you focus on you manifest right so if you focus if you have a, what we call a double negative goal like i'm not going to feel any pain i'm not going to feel any pain what are you focusing on the pain so i immediately always try to put something in as a single positive what do i want i want pleasure or I want to feel fulfilled, or I want to feel strong, like if I'm working out. So it's like, no pain, no pain. Like I always, that always bothered me about Rocky, because it's no pain, no pain. We are focusing on the pain, idiot. It's like, what do you want? I want victory. I want, I want connection. I want power. So it's, you want to create this freedom for, neg for negative things, and then immediately create the freedom for the positive thing. And so that's how I deal with the potential of failure. And it really frees me up. You know, when I'm about to go on stage, I, I do this often. I, I just say, are you free to completely screw up tonight? And I go, yeah. And I start laughing because it releases my energy. And then I say, are you free not to screw up? Yeah. Are you free to just kick butt? Yes. Are you free not to kick butt? Yes. It's all about the freedom. So the freedom to fail is a big deal for me. The more free I am to fail, the less I apt I am to fail because I have freedom associated. It doesn't get me. 
it's like, oh no, I can't fail, I can't fail. Because the moment you say you can't fail, you're focusing on failure. So that's my approach. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Neuropsych- neuropsychologist? <laughs> well, again, it's that that kind of obsessive intention too. And when you can release that obsession with what you don't want, then you you not only open yourself up for possibilities, but we go back to everything we've already talked about of shifting that state of being. But also I think it comes down to the confidence of the presence. If I allow myself the freedom to fail, what I'm really telling myself is I have the confidence to deal with it if I do. And I have the ability to deal with it. I have the skills and tools and the wherewithal that I'm going to be able to manage this situation if I do fail. And just by giving myself that freedom to fail, I'm empowering myself knowing I can handle it. That's how I view that. I think it's perfect. Yes. And, And another trick I learned is get really extreme about it. Blow your mind out. Like blow, blow your mind and say, am I free to fail? Am I free to run out on the stage and fall on my face and get knocked out and with a bloody nose and so I can't go on? Like make it really big so you, it's ridiculous in your head because then you start to laugh and you start to attach these, re, these ridiculous pictures with a failure and it eliminates the stress associated with the failure because that's what we want to do right is reduce the stress that associates us with what we're afraid of or the challenge am i free like am i free to get on i'm about to start playing am i free to fall off the drum stool fall off the back of the stage break my arm and screw up the whole show for pink like i get extreme like it makes you laugh right you laugh and the more you laugh then you reduce the stress associated with the potential failure. That's right. So that's another little tactic that I use. If I'm if I if I'm caught, like if I'm really like, oh man, I'm really kind of tripped out about this. I get real extreme and attach these really silly, yeah, just over the top pictures and fantasies. So I laugh about it at that point. I'm just you're just you're letting the stress. Re- you're releasing the stress from your mind and from your body because you're holding that stress in your body. Absolutely. So these, are, these are some of my tactics. I think it's perfect. And I just feel very compelled right now to add the rumination piece, meaning part of what creates that stress in the first place is having these thoughts, these visualizations, this rumination, either over something that has happened, maybe And this happened to me once I was walking on stage and I wear high heels every time I'm on stage, I'm not not going to wear high heels. And there was a gap in the stage and there usually are to some degree, but this was a pretty big gap and I'm walking and I'm strutting on stage and my heel gets caught. Luckily I didn't fall, but I caught myself in time and you know, I played it into exactly what I was saying, but, but my point is, that could have been a very embarrassing moment. It could have been a very dangerous moment. So instead of next time I'm on stage being like, I hope I don't fall, hope I don't fall, hope my heel doesn't get caught, blowing it up. So instead of ruminating over something that has happened and being worried about it, you can actually push through a lot of trauma and fear by doing exactly what you just said, visualizing the most absurd possibility and just owning it and feeling it and going along for that ride that immediately yeah. reduces the stress to reality in the in the present moment yeah I, I i love it and i think that acknowledging it i'm so open with my audience you know one of my big concerns is i get so excited sometimes i forget where i am i literally forget my content and I'll, I just told the audience the truth. That I, I got so excited, I totally forgot where I am. Hang on a second. And I take a look at my notes. They love it. Yeah. They love that human component. I'm trying to feel like my glasses are getting crazy. <laughs> um, again, like I'm looking, I keep on doing this. It's like, well, if I tell everybody why I'm doing that, it's because my glasses seem to be getting crooked. Um, get rid of the white elephant, as we call it in the room. Tell the yeah. people the truth, you know? Be human. Be human because every, first of all, 
um, the greatest fear beyond death is the fear of public speaking. Literally, I, I've read I've read that that um, statistic more than once. Some most people would, would because it, it goes back to that fear of all those eyes being on you when it was really really mattered. It's like a strong genetic DNA, um, you know, where you're accessing whatever was in your past. So, so many people are so afraid. They are so happy that it's you up there instead of them, <laughs> even if it's a little presentation, that let them in on the goofs. Let them in on the your nervousness. Let them, he's like, oh, I'm a little nervous tonight with you guys. I, what's up with that? You know, I, I'm so I, I tend to just err on the side of honesty, not to the point where I look stupid, but to the point where it's authentic if there's something going on. You know, sometimes I drop my stick and I go, wow, I really dropped, I really flubbed that one. I dropped my stick. You know, I joke about it because that it releases it for me as well. And everybody else, rather than thinking, oh, he dropped a sticker, rather than thinking, wait a minute, why is he stopping? What's going on? You know, I just tell him, that's why I'm stopping. I forgot where I am. I was so excited, you know, and just make it into something human, something fun, something everybody can relate to where and you also, they also feel like they get a, a glimpse into the reality of your life and, and what it's like. And, and it's, it's pretty, pretty astounding. Well, it's, and it's, yeah. that brings us back absolutely full circle to how our conversation started. We all just want to feel connected and we want to connect with other people. And the best way to do that is just to be a human and break the barrier, break the mask, if you will, and just be a human. And that helps us to connect better. So being honest about those and letting them, letting them in, in the joke or in, in what's going on in that reality, that's the best way to do it. Absolutely. I love it. Oh my gosh. I love, I love Mark, this whole conversation. Oh, me too. And I know we could go for days and days and days, but I so, like I said, I'm going to honor your time and I thank you so much. Tell our listeners how they can connect with you. We're, we're going to put show notes and in, in everything, your links, but tell our listeners what you have, if, how to connect with you. You're an amazing speaker. So obviously if people want to connect with you to hear you uh, speak for them. What do they need to do, Mark? Well, the best thing is to go on my website. If you could spell Shulman, you can remember it. It's markshulman.com, S-C-H-U-L-M-A-N. And uh, on my Twitter handle and my Instagram handle are at Marky Planet, M-A-R-K-Y-P-L-A-N-E-T. And um, I'm on Facebook, but, uh, and I'm on LinkedIn. So you can find me a number of ways. Uh, and there are a lot of different videos that I posted on my site. I'm about to redo my YouTube channel and really put a lot of content on there because I've been storing everything on Vimeo and I want to move a lot of content to YouTube and just get a little bit more accessible when it comes to that. But you can see a lot of fun stuff on my site. There's a lot of fun videos that I've done and very informative and, and on completely different topics. And uh, I'm always available to speak. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to Brazil um, next week to speak. Sugar Ray Leonard was supposed to speak, and this is this happened very close. I got it and within two weeks because he couldn't do a gig. I'm speaking for Lenovo in Bali at the end of the month. I'm speaking for USANA in Salt Lake City, and then I've got seven gigs in September, and I'm booking more gigs in October. Um it's just been really wonderful. So I, you know, my, my speaking is, is, is a very important part of my life. Um, I take it very seriously, as you can tell. And I, I'm just so grateful that I have the platform because of the people that I've been fortunate to be on stage with that people go, oh, this guy's got cred. I think I'll listen to him, you know? <laughs> Well, it's more than that, Mark. You're, you're, and that's what connected me to you immediately is you're a real human and you care. And it's not just of being of service, but you really care about making an impact so other people can feel more in alignment with who they want to feel and 
have more peace and joy in this world. And so that's what you're doing. You're changing the world. You're making an impact. So Mark, you keep being you and you keep doing that because you're doing a killer job at it. So thank you. Well, thank you. And you're doing the same thing. We're both doing, we're both equally of service. That's what we do. We're here to be of service. So I, I'd say, I say the same exact thing to you because you're an astounding speaker. And uh, I love, I love how you've reframed a lot of what I've talked about into neuropsychology and you're getting a little, you're, you're taking a deeper dive and getting a little bit more technical, which is wonderful. So you and I got to hit the stage together, girlfriend. We got to, we got to hang. We're going to do more wait. of that stuff. We're yeah. going to make that happen. This is step yeah. one. We're going to make that happen, yeah. Mark. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. Um, all right. By the way, I'm, I'm honored to be here with you because you are, you're brilliant. And please just keep doing what you're doing. That means a lot to me, Mark. Thank you. Thank you you're so welcome. much. You're all right. Welcome. We're going to sign off right. the podcast now. Okay, listeners, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Go Reflect Yourself. Please rate and review this episode. And if something moved you, please feel free to share. For more inspired action or to stay in touch, head on over to GoReflectYourself.com or HeatherJKreider.com. You can also take the growth mindset quiz and learn where your current growth mindset lies. Stay in touch on all social media at Heather J. Kreider. Until next time, this is your host, Heather Kreider, and I am challenging you to go reflect yourself so you can discover and become who you are meant to be.